All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, Play Fast Football. Today, I am going to do a video that I wanted to do last week. Obviously, uh, it would have been a little more pertinent last week when the Dolphins scored 70 points, but I'm going to take a look at some wrinkles the Dolphins were using off a of crack toss, and more importantly, some wrinkles that they are using within their formations, within motions, um, to run plays that are changing the presentation but not really changing the play. And I think some of these are simple enough that they can be used in high school. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Stride, the sideline replay company we use. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out Game Stride. Dome Hats, the headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. Here is my custom fitted dome hat, last year's edition from Bishop Kenny. So if you want completely customizable, if you want a hat that you can build or their design team can build, make sure you check out Dome because stock hats suck. Baker Sporting Goods Company, we use shirts like this. They do our sideline gear, our uh, practice gear for us. They Our uniforms are distributed from them. You can do coaches gear, players gear, fan gear, on, all in one convenient location. They also are in the shoulder pad world now with pro gear, big in the baseball world. Check out Baker Sports. Just Play Football, uh, playbook software we use. We do a lot of our meetings through uh, Just Play presentation mode, uh, a lot of game plans, installs, shared with the kids in Just Play. It's the best play drawing tool on the market. I use it for my Patreon site. I also use it if I'm going to speak at any clinic, so check out Just Play. Difference USA, Ultimate Striking Machine, you get thousands of reps. Don't need a partner, they set up right on the racks in your weight room, so you don't have to worry about uh, any crazy setup. They go right in your weight room on your current squat racks that you have in your weight room. You don't need to worry about a partner. It's you and a Difference USA machine. If you want to strike violently, you've got to practice striking violently check out Difference USA. All right, so one of the things, you know, in, in the Broncos game, and one of the things the Dolphins have been doing this year is some um, crack toss looks, which is a very simple play, right? It gets the ball to the perimeter quickly. You usually have pretty good angles. Um, you know, something that I think high school teams can do. But I think what the Dolphins are doing is they're wrinkling the presentation of it, and then they're kind of changing it from when sometimes it's pin-pull, sometimes it's, all right, more of a, uh, you know, almost like a, um, a veer or inverted veer type look where they get the toss out with zone action and then they have some boot and some mid zone action off it where they are showing you the same play changing the presentation of how they're getting to it all right and then they're just building in the wrinkles off of that play so the big thing that i try to keep in mind uh you know especially like right now as a defense coordinator in high school every week if i want to wrinkle something i got to make sure that it's not brand new to the players because you don't want your guys doing things that are completely brand new on a Friday night with three days of practice, right? So if it's a wrinkle and it's an adjustment that is similar to things you already do and you're changing the structure of it, the presentation of it. So like offense, the cool thing about offense is there's so many ways to change the presentation of what you're doing while keeping your base plays the same, if not very similar, keeping things similar for the quarterback. Defensively, when you do that, you got to try and keep coverages similar with a slight wrinkle, or you got to try and change blitz paths, so the same blitz with a slight wrinkle, all right? Or maybe you got to put a certain blitz path with a different coverage behind it. So maybe, you know, one week it's three under three deep, the next week it's the same path, but it's four under two deep, or it's man free, whatever it may be. Or you're trying to disguise the shell of things that you're doing. So maybe one week you're showing a lot of two shell that you're stemming out of, and then maybe the next week you're showing a lot of one shell or one high, whatever, however you want to look at it, it's about changing presentation. So, you know, early in the game, the Dolphins lined up in a conventional twin set under center, condensed over here, all right, and uh, what they did was on the first, first time they ran it was they took that fast motion that they've been using, so they motioned out, right? So what that does is that gets the wide receiver on the move in the passing game, but what it also does is it makes it tougher for corners to get up and be aggressive in their face. So now on the crack toss, it's gonna to make it a situation where the wide receiver has a little bit easier block for himself because the corner's off, right? So now when the corner's off, the wide receiver can get up there and block that. The first time they decided not to pin pull it, all right, they got a traditional 4-3 look with the three and a nine set to the tight end. So the first time they actually zoned it up and they got the tackle up to the wheel and they just kind of zoned it all right, that way, like it was zoned away, and they left the condensed player up on the sandbacker, and then they were able to take the fullback and put him on the end, and they ran the crack toss play, all right, like that. So first time they ran it, it was more of an under center look, and it was more of a zone look. It wasn't really the pin pull look. 
but it came off the fast motion across and it came from a two back set. All right, then, you know, very similar the next time that they went to it, they went to a one back shotgun setting. All right, but again, with a condensed look on the front side, and then they also had a condensed look on the back side and the shotgun setting. All right, so now you got to figure out exactly what looks you're going to get. All right, from the defense, if they're an over front team, where are they going to set the front? What are they playing behind it? What kind of coverage structures? All right, are you getting behind it? Are you getting some type of, all right, two high shell, one high shell, whatever it may be. But the next thing that they did was they went fast motion across the formation. So again, what that did was that drew, whether it was, if it was man to man, it was going to draw a guy running all the way across who's not going to be able to press that receiver. If it was a bump in coverage or a roll in coverage, like a safety drop down, it's going to draw a corner that's off. So what that does is that takes this corner, all right, and it kind of widens him out, even if it was some type of rotation down, rotation to the middle, whatever you might be seeing in high school. And now this time, because it was one back and a shotgun, they decided to pin pull it, all right, so they got... The point man in the condensed set down on the end, they got the next inside receiver up and they got the tackle up and now they ran the crack toss play from that look. So again, it came from condensed two by two, motion across to make it three by one. All right, so in the first play when they ran the toss from the eye, they had twins receivers and a fullback. So they still had three blockers to the front side. This time they went fast motion across, right? Their motion has been the talk of the town for everybody, how they're running all these different motions, all right? They're running guys fast across, all right? Another time I think they ran it, it was kind of a, almost a three by one condensed type of look, all right? Where it was, you know, a, a three by one condensed look and they went with fast motion inside and back to create the same look. Now he's up on the corner, they have the pin player, they get the tackle out, all right? And then they still have the other receiver there. So it's the same thing as the first play, all right, they've got those three guys that they're working at the point of attack, right? So they've got the receiver out, they've got the condensed player, and now they've got the pin so they get the tackle out. In the first play when they were in the eye, it was the two receivers, all right, and then they had the fullback and the tackle was able to climb to the next level. So they're creating the same numbers while running the same play. So a little bit different presentation, condensed, fast across, cluster sets, in and back out, getting that receiver out again. What this does is it... It makes it tougher to press. The Dolphins usually with Tyree Kill or Waddle or Braxton Burials, small receivers, more slot type guys that if they're outside, guys can get their hands on them. So when they move them around, not only does it change, you know, if you're pattern matching, it changes where one, two, and three are. If you're, you know, if you're spot driving, it changes landmarks to where you're trying to get to if you're going under one, two, three. If you're playing man, now you've got to play a guy that is full speed on the run, all right? So that wrinkle is changing the presentation, but they're keeping the same style of play. Now they're running crack toss from, all right, the shotgun, but they're still getting the look that they want, whether it's clustered, two by two, con two, by two condensed, motioning a guy across, they're still getting the exact same look they want, and that time they decided to pin pull it. So again, how big of an adjustment is that? A, a crack toss that's run with zone theories and a crack toss that's pin pull. Again, things I think everybody can do in high school. All right, the, you know, the next time they went to something along the same lines, the backfield action was a little bit different, all right, but they went kind of with that cluster set, all right, that cluster set there, they had the back set away, all right, and then what they did was they went with motion in and back out, all right, fast. Again, these are all going to be predicated on, on the look. So obviously within the game plan, you're talking about what looks are you going to be getting? How are they going to play these looks? What are they doing to the motions, right? So how are they going to play your bunch sets or how are they going to play these different sets, all right, to where every game plan is based on what the defense is going to do, what the rotations are going to be. If you know, uh, you know, the stuff that I do on my channel, I am not somebody who breaks down every NFL game. I don't break down NFL teams in general. If you want a more in-depth study on what the Dolphins are doing, there's plenty of videos out there like that. My goal in this video is to show you how they are using wrinkles off of a base play, changing the presentation, and things that I think we can do in high school. Okay, so what they did now is they created the same look, all right, with the motion. The back was in a different place, so if, you know, defenses maybe can game plan some things, maybe the Bills did a good job of figuring out where the back was 
Now the back was set away, all right? So they created the same look. They worked a guy down like he was working the pin, all right? Now they took a player up to work the second level, all right? And then what they did was they went sweep action, boot. They ran the over climb there. They took, this happened to be Tyreek Hill here who looked like he was going to work. This was Berrios because Waddle was hurt. So he went in, fast motion back out. They had the pin player, so they made it look like, all right, some type of sweep action, all right, and then they came boot back across, and what they did was they took Tyreek Hill, all right, and they ran him like he was going to set the edge for the toss play. He came back there, and that's the route that they hit off of the boot. So the boot was off of the same motion presentation, all right, that inside out motion fast, clustered, creating the look that they had been running the crack toss off of. Again, the only thing that was different was the tailback was set away, so it wasn't the crack toss look, but he was still set in a position where he could run, all right? The sweet play, the thing is, from this set and them clustered blocking it this way, if they pin-pulled it, would he hit it fast enough from there? So again, maybe the Bills did a good job with tendencies, backfield sets, don't know. Obviously, the Dolphins only scored 20 or whatever they scored, so now they're cold again. Now they're not the flavor of the week because they didn't score 70. But again, change of presentation, cluster, in, out, show the crack toss look, pin, show it like you're walking the crack toss, then they came across and they hit the under route, all right, on the bootleg there, okay? And then uh, one of the last things they did that was pretty neat, and it was actually when the backup quarterback got in, they went under center condensed, all right, so they went under center condensed here. So they had condensed set here. On this side, they were condensed there. They were under center, one back, okay? And again, all these things, I'm not here to tell you exactly what the front was. I'm not here to tell you what the adjustment was. I don't study, all right, the, the, the NFL and the Dolphins that in depth. If I wanted to do that, all right, I would obviously get my hands on the All-11 and watch it and break it down a million ways. That's not what I do. That's not my niche. That's not what I'm, I'm set up to want to do. I'm here to show you how these wrinkles can be used in high school. Okay, so what they did now was they went fast motion across with Berrios, right? And they, they set up how they wanted to run the crack toss play, the way that they had been creating three to the front side, condensed sets, pin, pull. All right, so they went fast motion there. And then they actually went full zone to the front side. All right, full zone to the front side. And then they brought the fullback or condensed player back to kick, and they ran mid zone off a of toss action. So this ball was actually tossed, okay? Corner had to widen out, so corner ends up getting blocked by the player there. All right, and then I, on the backside, I don't know if they worked that into there or up to there. But they went mid-zone action to where they went full zone, kick back, split flow, and now this wasn't really, it was tossed, so it wasn't tight zone, but it wasn't a perimeter play. It wasn't pinned and pulled. It was full zoned. It wasn't set up to be a perimeter play. They gave you split flow toss action, and the running back creased it up in there for about a 65, 70-yard touchdown their second to last touchdown or the last touchdown of the game that made it 70 or the one that made it 63, whatever it was. But same look, condensed, fast motion, get you to the numbers on the front side where they had been running crack toss. They went ahead and tossed the mid zone play. So they went ahead and showed toss action from under the center. So they gave you the same presentation that they were running toss out of, and they even tossed the ball to the tailback. So that brings the wrinkle to a whole nother level is instead of running this as a mid-zone play with a give or a hand from under center, they reversed out and tossed it, gave you the crack toss presentation with the, the ball actually tossed to the back. So all the eye candy to the defense looks like crack toss. Crack toss numbers, getting the cluster set again from 2x2 two two condensed, motioning to 3x1, all the ways that they have been running the crack toss all right, throughout the season and throughout that game. They physically tossed the ball, but they ran more of a mid-zone play. It was a little bit wider track by the back. It hit somewhere inside and creased. Again, don't know exactly what the defensive was in. Don't know exactly what the front structure, backer structure was. But I do know that it was 
condense two by two, motion to three by one, split zone action, full toss, more of a mid zone theory, mid zone entry point, and the back creased it for about a 60 or 70 yard gain. Now, why are all these things important? I think we can do them in high school. I think as an offensive coordinator, these are things that you can be doing in high school. These fast motions that they're using in and out, the thing you got to remember is once you create terminology and you work on timing of where the ball needs to be snapped, all you're doing is returning players to a position that they already know how to play. So if you run that same formation and that guy's lined up out there as a number one and you run that play and he's got to block the corner, okay, well now when you line him up somewhere else and motion him to that point, all you've changed is the presentation. You've added terminology and for motion. So all these different motions they carry have to have terminology, so maybe the terminology gets a little bit complicated at times. But once you iron that part out and you iron out when the ball is going to be snapped, all you're doing on offense is you're creating a new way to present the same play. So the linemen up front are blocking the crack toss play with zone theories, the crack toss play pin and pull, mid zone, which they probably run a million different ways, right? Tight zone, mid zone, wide zone, whatever it may be. These are all things they already do. They're not putting in new plays. So they're not going in and saying, hey guys, this week we like this blocking scheme versus this front, and you got three days to perfect it. And we got to hope that we get that front and, and when we're in that formation, and we got to hope that we get that adjustment to that motion. It's plays that they already run. They're just changing how they present the play to you. And then they're using those fast motions in and out to go to standard RPOs or passing plays that once the motion player gets where he belongs, he's running the route that he always runs from out there. So you're not really changing anything for the offense. You're presenting eye candies or eye candy to the defense. You're presenting things for them to look at to get them distracted from what they should be playing. If it's pattern match, you're changing where the ones, twos, or threes are. If it, you know, or if it's spot drop and they're trying to work under receivers, all right, under one, two, three, or if it's man to man and they're trying to play man off of those things, all you're doing is changing the look changing the presentation, and you're putting wrinkles into your playbook off of plays that you already run, right? So for me, as a defense coordinator in high school, it's the same thing every week I try to do. Based off of my self-scout, the things that I've done in previous weeks, when I go to play an opponent, I try to put in wrinkles to say, okay, how can we do that a little bit differently? All right, so if we're running that path, is there any way we can change it this week and say, all right, well, maybe the end stays in the B gap, the mic is the A-gap blitzer, and we don't long stick America's blitz. So if we were running 4-I long stick, Mike in the B-gap, Sam off the edge, well, maybe the following week we wrinkle it up and we leave the 4-I, we bring the mic in the A-gap. We've got the same gaps accounted for. We're just doing it with a different path, right? So we're just changing the path. Or maybe if it was 3 under 3 deep behind that, maybe the next week it's 4 under 2 deep, and it's the same blitzer, same guys in coverage. We're just changing the coverage shell behind it. Right, so not, I'm not drawing up a, a new blitz every week. I'm not installing new blitzes every week that the kids got to learn. I'm not installing new coverages every week. I'm just telling the kids, hey, this week, last week in three by one, we played a bunch of this adjustment. This week in three by one, I want to play this adjustment. It's an adjustment we already play. We're just changing how we're playing three by one based on the game plan, right? So what the Dolphins are doing is they're wrinkling things within their own game plan, things that I think we can be doing in high school, all right, and they're just changing the presentation of the play. They're not changing the entire play. You know, sometimes when we watch college in the NFL, we got to figure out as coaches, are those things that we are physically capable, capable of doing? Are they things that we are physically capable of blocking? Are they things that we are physically capable of throwing? So certain route combinations or RPOs, if that takes a quarterback making some, you know, throw that our kids don't have the arm strength to make, it's a great play, but it doesn't work for us. What I love about the Dolphins is they're doing things that let Tua be who he is. He's making intermediate throws that he can make. He's anticipating where defenses are going to be based on motion. They're giving him some really good pre-snap looks to understand what the coverage structure is. They're allowing him to do the things that fit his skill set. They're allowing Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell and Berrios and now uh, uh, Devin Achain or Akane, however you want to pronounce it, and Mostert. They're playing to the skill set of their players, and every week, they're just wrinkling. That's the greatest part about offense. You've got the keys first. You've got the diagrams. You've got the marker. You can wrinkle it however you want, and they're finding ways to keep defenses on their toes. Unfortunately, this past week, they lost to the Bills. So, again, football is a very fickle game. One week, you're the flavor of the week. You're the best thing going. The next week, everybody wants you fired. So, 
My goal in a presentation like this is not to break down the Dolphins, not to break down Mike McDaniel or, or what they're doing. It's to show you how what they're doing can be done in the high school game and what we should be thinking about as high school coaches. So as a defense coordinator every week, my wrinkles need to be off of things I already do. I don't need wrinkles that are brand new fronts, brand new coverages, brand new run fits. I need to keep everything as similar, same as, as I can, and it's the same thing on offense. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, turn those notifications on, ring that bell so you know every time we do a video or we go on YouTube Live, I will probably be on YouTube Live tomorrow night discussing uh, week five, what we did this previous week, how everybody else's season is going. So I'll probably be on YouTube Live tomorrow night. So when you ring that bell, you know when we go on YouTube Live or when a video comes out. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like this video. Don't like the video, as always, leave a comment. If I see the comment, I will respond to it, and I appreciate the interaction with the community. It doesn't have to be uh, in agreement. It can be disagreeing. It can be whatever you want it to be. I'm thankful that you watched the video, and I understand that when you use a platform like this, people are going to have opinions different than yours. I'm glad you watched the video. You are entitled to your opinion. You don't have to agree with everything that I say. Hope your season is going well. I hope everybody's healthy. The weather's finally broke a little bit in the south, so starting to get some cooler weather. We're at that midway point now in our season where we're almost on the back end of it. So hopefully you're winning, hopefully things are going well. Uh, if they aren't going your way, hopefully you get it turned around this week. I appreciate everything you do for me. Remember, if you want more than just these videos, if you want us actually playing some of our concepts uh, on defense, then you can check out the Patreon site, www.patreon.com backslash Coach Mac. Uh, that's a subscription site, so I put film on there, more clinics on there. And then uh, if you're interested in the tight front stuff and the split field stuff and the blitz family stuff. I threw that clinic offer out there last week. If you email me, I'll get you the four or five clinics that I did on tight front, split field, blitz families. It's over five and a half hours of football, so well worth your time if you are into that stuff. I appreciate everything you do for me. Remember, you won't play well till you play fast. See all of you next time.